Hello, this is the Bible in Fewer Words. We are Carol and Steve Wells. This is episode 56, Numbers, chapters 6 through 10. Hi, Steve. Hi, Carol. Did you have something to say this morning? Yeah, I forgot to say something in the last episode. <laughs> All right, well, let's correct that. Well, you remember in, in the last episode we had the Law of Jealousies. Yes. And the priest gave the woman that the husband suspected of being unfaithful some bitter water. Mm -hmm. The woman drank it, and she was supposed to say... Amen, amen. Amen, amen. And that is the very first time that those words are used in the Bible. Ha! Huh. Numbers 5, 22. Amen. Can I have an amen? Yeah. So, yeah, so that's the first time. It's kind of weird. You know, it's a strange thing for her to say. That's one of the trivia questions at the website. Oh. <laughs> so you remembered. <laughs> I have uh, 894 trivia questions that are like that. Like, where in the Bible is the first use of the word amen? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's the answer. Okay. Numbers 522. So now we have to go on to the next Fun-filled story. Yeah, we're going to cover five more chapters in Numbers today. We are moving along. Yeah. It's going to be uh, chapters 6 through 10, right? Yeah. Okay, so the first verse is, God says to Moses, When a man or woman decides to become a Nazarite, what's a Nazarite? It's never really defined. We're gonna, this is as close as we're going to get to it when we describe it here in this chapter. So not not someone from Nazareth. Not someone from Nazareth. It's not a Nazarene. Okay. I didn't look up to see where the word actually comes from, but there's two very famous Nazarites in the Bible. And who are they? Samson is one, and Samuel is another. And so we'll be hearing a lot more about them later. Okay. Maybe your name has to start with an M to be a, a Nazarite. I mean, an S. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't say so. Okay. No? And, the, and the interesting thing here is, as we just start off, is that a man or woman decides to, and the, and the Bible is clear that a woman, you could be a Nazarite if you want. Wow. Yeah. It's the first thing that, you know, well, it's last... Your first opportunity as a woman in the Bible, I think. Right? <laughs> yes, I mean, although you can have an opportunity to be an adulteress and then, you know, have to drink that bitter water. Yeah. A woman can do that. And you can have child. you can have a child sometimes. Uh, if God allows you, uh -huh. if he opens your womb. Yep. Okay, so we're moving on then. When a man or a woman decides to become a Nazarite, they must not drink wine, strong drink, vinegar, or grape juice, nor eat moist or dried grapes, or anything from a grapevine. God is anti-grape. It is a strange thing. You know, you would think if, he was, if it was the alcohol, he mm -hmm. would just say don't drink alcohol from any source, right? Yeah. But no, he's specifying wine, and it sounds like grape juice or raisins or anything that's derived from a grapevine yeah. is off-limits for a Nazarite. Yeah. So something well, to consider. Also, I mean, strong drink, so anything, no alcohol, it sounds like. Oh, it does say that. Okay. Yes. Um, okay, while they are Nazarites, they must not cut their hair nor come close to any dead bodies. The whole dead bodies thing. God really has something against dead bodies. He really does, yeah. Although he creates a whole lot of them a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> if someone dies near a Nazarite, the Nazarite has defiled his consecration and must shave his head seven days after being near the dead body. Hmm. A priest must then sacrifice two doves or pigeons for him, one for a sin offering and one for a burnt offering. And a first-year lamb as a trespass offering. And an unblemished male first-year lamb for a burnt offering. An unblemished female first-year lamb for a sin offering. And an unblemished ram for a peace offering. Again, with the offerings and offerings. Yeah, a lot of animals you got to sacrifice here. We're going to have to create a lot of dead animal bodies <laughs> because this Nazarite came near a dead body. I guess a dead human body. Okay. The Nazarite will then shave his head and burn his hair as a peace offering. Didn't he do that first? 
to become a Nazarite? He had to cut his hair. No. Um, well, it doesn't say so. It says he must not cut his hair. Oh, you're right. Yeah, so he's gonna, his hair is going to get really long. Mm -hmm. And then if he comes near a dead body, then he's going to cut off his hair. And then he's going to have to sacrifice his hair along with all these animals. Okay, so then he's starting like as a baby Nazarite. I guess the, so. It sounds yeah. like the longer your hair is, the more you've been an upright Nazarite. Yeah, it does sound that way. Okay. And remember, I mentioned that Samson is a Nazarite. And remember, <laughs> you, you know, Samson and his hair is kind of a famous story, which yes. we'll cover later. And Delilah, who kind of, yep, we can't, we can't go there. No, we'll get there. That's in Judges. <laughs> okay. Um, the priest will take the sodden shoulder of the ram, along with an unleavened cake and wafer, and put them in the hands of the Nazarite after he has shaven. What is a sodden shoulder? I think it's kind of a... Mushy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. The priest will then wave them for a wave offering in front of me, it's God, with the wave breast and the heave shoulder. After that, the Nazarite may drink wine. This is the law of the Nazarite. Okay, I'm confused now. So after he becomes a Nazarite, he can drink wine. I don't know. <laughs> because it's the first time, when a man or a woman decides to become a Nazarite, they must not drink wine. Right. Yeah. So maybe that's all in preparation. Let's see if you're strong enough and are committed enough to do all these things. And then once you become a Nazarite, you can drink wine. Yeah, I'm not sure. It, it seems fairly clear when you start off that you're not supposed to drink wine or alcohol or have anything to do with any grape products, right? Yeah. Any vine, thing from the vine. And you're also not supposed to cut your hair or come close to any dead bodies. That seems to be pretty much all there is to it. But then if you do come close to a dead body, then you have to go through all this stuff, cut off your hair, sacrifice some animals. When you get all done with that and you do the wave offering and all of that, then I guess you're good to go and you can drink wine. But I thought you're a Nazarite. You're not supposed to drink wine. Well, and what benefits does it do a person to be a Nazarite? I don't know. This is this is pretty much all that the Bible says about Nazarites, except for these other. There's these couple famous Nazarites. Yeah. Yeah. This is the law of the Nazarite. Not not a clear law of no, the Nazarite. No, it isn't. <laughs> all right. Uh, so now we move on to a priestly blessing. Yeah, I'm including this just because it's about the closest thing to a to a kind of a nice nice little thing that we have in the Book of Numbers at least so far. So it says, God says to Moses, bless the people in this way. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May, his, may he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace. Hmm. So I thought that was kind of nice. It is so kind of nice. including it here. And it is something that's used quite a bit by Christians and Jews in their uh, religious ceremonies even today. So you might run, you might come across that. So that's where it comes from, from Numbers chapter six. Is that what they said in Fiddler on the Roof? Is a little bit more elaborate than that. They have a very nice uh, Sabbath prayer that they sing just right as the sun is going down on the beginning of the Sabbath. Very nice song, and it uh, resembles this. Okay. So chapter seven. On the day Moses set up the tabernacle. The princes of Israel brought their offerings to God, which included six covered wagons and twelve oxen. The total weight of the silver and gold offerings was 2,400 and 120 shekels, respectively. So the silver was 2,400 and there was 120 shekels of gold. And so this is what they had in their wagons that they were bringing. And each of the tribes brings a bunch of stuff. And it's described in detail in the these 80 verses that I'm leaving out here in chapter 7. I see that. I'm we just kind from... of summarizing it at the end. So we go from verse 1 to verse 84. Yeah. And there's nothing there except for a list of all the details of what's in these carts that they're, each tribe, each of the 12 tribes, uh -huh. is bringing. Wow. To the tabernacle. All right. So, listeners, you can thank us. We are not doing 83 verses right there. That's right. But if you want to see them, 
feel free to go to the website and click on this episode and it'll take you right to the King James Version. You can read it for yourself. Yep. The total number of peace offerings was 24 bullocks, 60 rams, 60 male goats, and 60 first-year lambs. So a lot of animals are being sacrificed here. And this is over what period of time? I think it's all in a day. Oh. The day that the uh, that Moses set up the tabernacle. Huh. And now we're going to leave out the next three chapters. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So we just want to kind of tell you a little bit about what's in them. Okay. So there's a section on how to light lamps. That's probably the lamps that are in the tabernacle. Mm-hmm. Leaving that out. Shedding some light on all this stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And then there's something about the uh, how God replaces the firstborn Israelites with the Levites. And mm. it's a very complicated concept. That Okay, so the first that I remember about God dealing with firstborns is, um, is the Passover. Well, it's not the first. Before that, he, he said that your firstborn sons are, are mine. And he's it, talking to who? To all the Israelites. Okay. So they had to give, dedicate. Oh. They had even had to ransom. Like, yes, like you're right. Like pay the priest to get them back, right, I think? Uh-huh. But anyway, they, originally it was the firstborn sons were gods. Mm. And then the exodus happened. And remember, God came through and killed all the firstborn sons of no. the Egyptians, but he saved the Israelite sons. Well, at that time, the, it's explained in this section that we're leaving out, not ex- very clearly. What happens is God replaced, because after he killed all of the Egyptian firstborn, then at that moment, then the Levites became now, they now belong to God instead of the firstborn sons that God passed over during during the uh, Passover. You know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they're kind of replacing, the Levites are replacing that requirement of the firstborn sons being belonging to God. Now the Levites do. Okay. So the line of priests. Yeah, and so I'm leaving out, there's, there's, a, there's a chapter about that, and I'm leaving that out. And then there's something about the Passover, that we've already kind of talked about the Passover. Mm-hmm. And then what to do if you happen to touch a dead body during Passover. There's that kind sounds of, important. There's some special things that you can do, because you can't celebrate Passover because you're unclean. So there's what I call the unclean Passover. And then it talks about uh, there being a cloud by daytime and a fire at night over the tabernacle. Oh, to guide the way where they're going. Yeah, when the when the cloud leaves, uh-huh. then the people leave and follow that cloud. Okay. So that's chapter 9. Then chapter 10 is about silver trumpets. Oh. These are special trumpets that are blown for signals, like like the people in the south to go if it's just blown once, and the people in the east to go if it's blown twice. And who blows the trumpet? A, a priest. Only priests can blow the trumpet. Okay. It's, it's very clear about that. So it sounds like a Morse code kind of thing. Yeah, there's some kind of code. And so when you go to war, you blow a trumpet. Uh, when you are, it sounds like when you're happy, you blow a trumpet. <laughs> when you're sad, you blow a trumpet. Uh-huh. And then if you go to war, you blow a trumpet, and God will hear that, and he will come, and he will save you from your enemies. Oh, well, that is handy, having those trumpets around. Uh-huh. And then you blow these trumpets at the beginning of every month. So it's also a calendar. Yeah. And then that's about it, except for Moses has a meeting with his um, father-in-law. Oh, he does? Under a different name this time, it's Hobab. Oh. We've seen Rule and we've seen Jethro. Now he's named Hobab. I don't know what his real name is. He meets with him, asks him to go with him on their journey. And Hobab says, no, no thanks. I'm going to go home. <laughs> and that's all there is about that. <laughs> and that's the end. That's that's the end of chapter 10. And so we have now covered, I think, fairly carefully, uh-huh. first 10 chapters of Numbers. And how many chapters in Numbers? Numbers has 36 chapters. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we've got to start. Good start. Yep. And and it does get more interesting. It's not the first 10 chapters are are a little bit on the boring side. Okay. That's why we could get through them so quickly. Cool. Thanks for sharing the Bible in fewer words. Oh, sure. Thanks for helping with that. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. Bye-bye, everybody. See you next time.